If I had to pick a single player first person shooter to become a large open world game, I don't think I'd have chosen the Metro series. And that is why I'm not a game developer, and the world is a much better place because of it. Right, before we get started, we need to address the elephant in the room. Elephant. In the... room? I don't even know how that would work. I mean, I just don't have a room big enough to house an elephant. Even a small one. But anyway, I was saying, this game was released only on the Epic Store, and I hate Fortnite. But I was always going to play this game and therefore buy this game. Even if they went all wacky and tried to release this game on a round piece of shiny plastic and told us all to somehow insert it into our computers. Like, how the hell would that even work? Anyway, back on subject. The Metro game series are set in the metros underneath the city of Moscow. The tunnels and stations where the people of Moscow now live are dark, depressing, scary as hell places, where death in the form of bandits or even worse, mutants, could be waiting around each and every corner. The setting sets the tone for the post-apocalyptic world of ruins and decay. That is, until we get to Exodus where we leave the Metro. You know, the place that is in the title, Metro. M. E. T. R. O. Exodus. And go out in the world beyond Moscow and, well, the world is anything but depressing. If anything, most of the world we get to see is, well, beautiful. In a The Last of Us Mad Maxi sort of post-apocalyptic sort of way. And this is the main difference from Metro 2033 and Last Light to Exodus. The first two are all about each station and faction doing whatever it takes to survive in the dark, rotten, depressing Metro. But Exodus is, well, more hopeful, the world more beautiful. Yes, there are factions still trying to murder each other for the last drop of water, or because something their long dead teacher told them once upon a time, and yes, that is a thing in Exodus. But with all the factions and the fighting and the mutants, there is still a feeling of hope. A hope of a better future, of a world rebuilt. Yes. That is until you get the bad ending like me, and it just leaves a bitter feeling as the game rips out your heart. Don't say such okay, let's talk about the story, and for this we need to go deeper underground. Right, did I just say that? Okay, that's the bar I've just set myself, and it's very, very low. Right, no problem, let's continue by going all the way back to 2033, which is in fact in the future, you bloody idiot. At the start of Metro 2033, we first meet Artyom, the adopted son of the leader of the station at Exhibition. And that is us, and also our home station. Artyom leads a simple life, well, as simple a life as you can have, trying to survive day to day, in a world that has been all but destroyed by the hellfire brought on by the world's supply of nuclear warheads. So surviving can be a little bit of a chore, but your father's friend Hunter turns up to remove the boredom, and well, all hell breaks loose. You end up helping defend your station from a mutant attack, where so many people died. Hunter, who is a member of the Spartan Order, more on them later because I'm going to have to go a bit deeper I think, heads out into the tunnel to find out what happened. Before leaving he gives you instructions to head to Polis, if he does not return. Guess what, our safe boring life is no more, because we never get to see Hunter again. What happens next is a grand roller coaster ride through the metro and the streets of Moscow above ground. As we, Artyom, try to make it to the station of Polis to meet a man called Miller and save the metro from the evil forces. Along the way we get to meet many interesting people who go on and teach us many lessons that will help us to complete our mission and on the way impress the Spartan Order, which is always a good thing I believe. Metro Last Light picks up shortly after the events that ended 2033, after you, and I'm blaming you for this, dropped some more nukes onto Moscow. I mean the city was pretty much buggered anyway, what difference would a couple more bombs make, right? All of a sudden Moscow was starting to look a bit like Appalachia, rebuild America by dropping an ever increasing amount of bombs onto it, great idea Todd. Um, anyway, Last Light picked up at the end of Armageddon 2. Impressed with your actions and your bomb dropping skills apparently, 
the Spartan Order decided to take you into their ranks, and the whole Order moved into the newly founded D6 Spartan HQ. H... Q... D... 6? You sunk my battleship. Anyway, uh, where was I? So you start the game with your friends the Spartans at their new home. What could go wrong? Well, everything really. Okay, it's time, so before I go on, let's talk a little bit about the Spartans. Not much, because I believe I can get an entire video out of this subject. They are a military-based organisation whose aims are to protect all citizens in the metro. They are experts at small-scale operations and spending time above ground in the streets of Moscow. They are very small in numbers compared to the other main factions in the series, but each Spartan is worth several ordinary troops. Where have I heard this story before? Well, in Last Light, the Spartans hold a very important part of the Metro, D6. And this place is like Christmas and Easter, with the destructive power of nuclear weapons all rolled into one beautiful pie. And now they all know it exists, everyone else wants a piece of this pie. In fact, not just the pie, but the whole damn pie shop. The two main factions we met in 2033 were the Reds... ...and the Nazis. Both a bit nasty. I know, it shocked me too. Both of these would do anything to get their hands on the treasures held within D6. And the game concludes with one hell of a fight to save D6, and with it all exploding and everyone dying. But for the sake of Exodus, let's just say I got the good ending, and Artyom did not die. So, on to Metro Exodus then. Artyom had a dream. A dream about living above ground, somewhere warm apparently by the sea. There was just one small pro- well, quite large problem actually. The surface is a wasteland and there is no way anyone could live up there. After all, it is well known that no one in the whole world survived. Only those in the metro under Moscow. Well, guess what? That's not strictly true. As it turns out, lots of people survived. Yay to all humans! But for reasons I'm still not completely sure about, people have been hiding this fact from everyone in the metro. Artyom and Anna, now your wife, who we first met in Last Light where she had a strange infatuation, with rabbits. Come on, rabbit. Would you let those things into the metro? Anyway, the two of you discover this fact. Not about the rabbits, but the other survivors. Do you hear that, Artyom? You were right, all along. Do you see? And you both go ahead and steal a train. A bit rash, you could say, but it was the baddies' train that they were using to travel above ground. Once aboard the train, much fun and good times were had, forgetting all the hardship and death that followed, of course. And that is about where the main story of Metro Exodus starts, as we take a journey across Russia over the next 12 months aboard the train, the Aurora. The Metro series as a whole sees itself as a first-person shooter survival horror game. The claustrophobic dark tunnels from the first-person view makes the games just a little bit more terrifying than if we were playing the game from a third-person view. And when we get above ground and into the fresh air, the game opens up and feels less claustrophobic, right? Well, wrong. Above ground is in fact a lot worse, it's still dark, not as dark as underground, but still bloody dark. But as the air is still radioactive, it is toxic. So you can only go to the surface if you are willing to wear a gas mask. But a gas mask is not the end of it. You are still not completely safe. You still need to change the filters of the gas mask about every 15 seconds of gameplay. That is unless your gas mask gets damaged in combat and you once again suffocate before you even have to worry about changing a filter. Yes, the surface is just a dream. No way, not a dream. A nightmare. A fucking nightmare. As well as being an FPS, the games do encourage you to try your hand at stealth. And it is this way that I prefer to play these games. There are fewer things in Metro more satisfying than sneaking up behind a squad of Nazis and taking them down one at a time with no one noticing. Metro Exodus follows the playstyle of the two earlier games, nicely offering many different ways to complete most of the missions. You will find that many missions will need to be completed with stealth in mind and with trying to avoid pointless fatalities, but only if you're interested in getting the good ending. With my playthrough, I did not get the good ending. I got the bloody bad one. Though at the time, after spending 30 plus hours with the game, it was a huge downer. 
Though it did mean I still had the desire to jump right back in and play a game. But only after a rig update, this game is a beast to run. Exodus has improved on many features from 2033 and Last Light. The weapons are even more beautiful now, and weapon mods are still a thing. But in the previous games, you could only upgrade your weapons in stations. Metro Exodus had to come up with a different way of doing this. Not many stations above ground, apparently. The way they came up with this is completely satisfying. You carry a large backpack with you always to store your supplies, and also to use as a mobile workbench to craft some gear and certain ammo on. But its other use is to upgrade your weapons with newly acquired mods while on the move. It's simple, but works beautifully. Another thing brought over from the prequels are the interactions with all the characters. I always love the Metro stories, but the characters make the game seem more real. And that's what we all really want, isn't it? Lifelike characters to share our imaginary worlds with. The interactions Artyom has with his companions on the Aurora count as some of my favourites in the series. True, it can be hard to see past the fact that Artyom never ever speaks to his friends. Hell, even his wife. But they seem past the silent treatment, so so will I. Just listening to the conversations your companions are having amongst themselves reminds me a little bit of Mass Effect. It could just as well be Liara talking with Rex, and for me to compare this game to Mass Effect is very high praise indeed. I did have a few problems with certain characters. Miller stood out as one, he was such a badass in the previous games, but in this he turned out to be a little bit naive and too easy to trust. I mean for God's sake it was always going to be a damn trap and he led his troops straight into the frying pan, literally. But moments like that are forgotten when the sweeter moments of counter interactions take place. Artyom and Anna for one. This is great. Also the stories and memories shared by the Spartans about their fallen comrade Duke. But if you saved Duke, unlike me, you would have missed out on this. And it is intriguing to me what I would have been treated to if Duke lived, like he would have done. If my murderous ways had not bored over and I slaughtered everyone in the fishing village. The combat seems very familiar to what you would expect, maybe slightly slower than most FPSs. Like it is almost forcing you into a slightly stealthy playstyle. But for me that was never a problem. And as long as I get my killing and murdering tendencies out of my system before getting back into Exodus. Graphics. I would normally include a section about the graphics for the PC version of the game. But it seems a little unfair really. My PC ran the game okay at 1440. But as soon as I tried to record the game at 1440, it started to smoke and melt a little bit around the edges. So I ran and recorded at 1080p with medium settings. So not great if I wanted to talk about how beautiful the game looks and how it compares to 2033 and Last Light. Soon I'll be upgrading my PC and I'll do a proper comparison video in the future. But for me, the game still looked beautiful, even just on medium settings. So I cannot wait to see what it looks like on Ultra 1440. Don't you think I'd also love to live on an ocean beach or in a green forest? Well, so what does it all mean then, Sean? Absolutely no one is saying. Well, I will tell you anyway. If you like 2033 and Last Light, you should love Exodus. If you like FPSs, you should probably give this a go. Okay, it's on Epic. And up to the last minute, this did sort of put me off. It did, but I still went for it. But absolutely anybody who knows me knows I love post-apocalyptic games. And for me, this is right up there with the best of them. I love the story it has to tell. I love the new direction the series has taken. Look, a it was bold, but in the end, I believe it paid off. It's not the greatest game ever, but what I think the greatest game changes daily. As I write this, it is Fallout 3. Sorry, not New Vegas. But while I started to edit it, it changed to Mass Effect 2. Maybe by the time I release the video, The Witcher 3 will be back at number one. But Metro Exodus deserves an honorable mention amongst those games. My biggest gripes of the game are, maybe it could have been a little bit longer for me. I do love long games and this was what, 30 hours? Maybe 50 would have been nice? But my biggest problem is the good and the bad endings. With my first playthrough of any game, I will always end up with the bad ending. That's just how I play the game first time round. 
and for the first few days after completing the game, I'll be on one hell of a downer. Not quite to the same extent as Mass Effect 3 ending, and I knew for the rest of my life I would have a big Mass Effect hole in my life. Andromeda almost filled it, but not quite. When Exodus ended, my main thoughts were when I could get right back into it. And this time I'd get the good ending, because I'd be a good boy, I promise. Would I feel the same if I got the good ending already? Maybe I'll find out once I complete the game again, but I'm not certain. Thank you so much for watching. Metro Exodus is insane. Please like below, or dislike if you don't like my constant bashing of Fallout New Vegas. Comment with anything you like, including my constant bashing of Fallout New Vegas. And sub if you like to see content where I'm not always bashing Fallout New Vegas. I'm Sean, Insane in the Game. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you someday in that safe zone. Kingdom Come, it's just like Skyrim, isn't it? And in my head, I draw my bow and put an arrow right in their knee. I no longer have friends. You can play this game however you want, unless you want to spend your time hunting dragons and saving the world.